Okay, let me show you what I ordered from keylog.com. You can see it's K-E-E-L-O-G.com. Uh, they're not a sponsor, I'm just a customer. I got one of these dual power supplies that powers a 64 and a 1541-2 drive. I also got just a standard power supply. I believe I ordered it in the gray. And finally, I ordered one of these power supply testers. All right, shipping from Poland to US by DHL was I think 9.95. Not bad. Got a, it took uh, eight days to get here. Good, not bad. So let's open it up. This winky little knife does it. Power supply tester. Hmm. Instruction sheet. Not bad. Obviously for the Commodore 64. All right, and there's the gray standard power supply. Has some weight to it. Hmm. I don't see any screws. I probably wouldn't open it anyways, but yeah, it's got some good weight to it. Proper plug for state side. It's like a big, pretty good build. This seems like it's manufactured. Right, let's open the other one. And here's the big one. Oh, that's interesting. Proper plug. And since this is a dual power supply for the 64 and the 1541 drive, there's two leads off here. There you go. 64 and 1541 drive. Let's power up a 64 and a 1541, excuse me, 1541-2. I should have been saying that all along. 1541-2 which has the external power supply. All right, let's plug these in and give it a go. And away we go. Oh, there we go. Anyhow, uh, the deluxe one, or I'll call it deluxe one, dual power supply for 64 and 1541 too. Yeah, does a good job. Let's power on the 1541-2. Yep. We have power. Okay, let's try out the uh, smaller power supply now. Hmm. Again. Yep, works right away. And that lights up. That's a nice little touch. Hmm, this is actually interesting. Looking around my power supplies, and I totally forgot I had one of these style. This really early style is not, I don't believe this is filled with epoxy. I believe this is serviceable. So this one I'll probably open up and uh, repair and keep that. And there's been so recent talk on uh, Facebook, Commodore 64 128 group about it so-called quote-unquote re-bricking these old I may do that anyhow figured I showed a different styles for sure these two the black brick and now this beige brick are dead regardless of what this tester is going to say and there's no way in heck I'd ever use the black brick anymore and at this point I would say do not even use the beige brick these were known to be a little bit more reliable but this is the one I was actually using, and I guess I probably shouldn't have, but it didn't take out any computer. But anyhow, 
this one I trust a little bit more, but I think I'll, at this point any of these bricks, just absolutely not, just buy a modern power supply. So, and I'm not sure about this tester. Seems pretty basic, but let's plug it in and see what we, what we get. Five point two volts and ten volts on the nine on the nine volt AC. And no ripple current, which is good. And I don't think I don't think this is really stressing it much, despite having these cooling fins. I, I don't think this is stressing it. So I feel, do feel a little bit of warmth on it. Yeah, and these power these testers, they're not absolute that's for sure I wouldn't I would just use this as a really quick reference another thing I've seen is like when these old black brick power supplies are starting to fail you could you could test it with a multimeter you could plug it in it'll work and you think everything's great and then five ten minutes later it kills your computer and I, I, after a while I decided to hook up one of these to a scope and watch it over time with a load and your voltage would be running along normal and all of a sudden like interval not the same rate but say anywhere between five and ten minutes it would run along fine then you get a huge spike and come back down and that huge spike is what takes everything out and it'll go back to seemingly normal so if you're only spot testing it yeah you're not going to catch it now the infamous black brick the black brick of death Yeah, 5.06 under a load that probably come down some 11 volts on the 9 volt this is showing up pulling a little bit more load Four, is that 433 milliamps pulling a little bit more load Four forty four, okay no, same. Didn't really much paying attention to the current. Now this one is showing see on this little test, this thing is showing you would think okay that's safe, but I I know this doesn't work. You hook it to a real sixty four, it's not gonna work. Or at least if it powered on I would not trust it. But I seem to remember this one being dead and I'm not no way in heck I'm gonna try that with a real Commodore. And the one that just went out of me and gave me a scare that it took out my PAL 64C. It didn't. See, yeah, you look at this 5.14 volt, barely a ripple. Yeah, yeah, you, know, you would think this little tester, hey, we're good. Nah, that's a dead power supply. These things are limited. Yeah, you need, you know, this is just for really quick reference, and it wasn't expensive. Short of getting another power supply, get one of those power savers that people construct now and then. Okay, anyhow, that's enough of that. Oh, actually, why don't we do the new power supply? Uh, 4.94, a little bit lower than I'd like to see, but... Again, under load, as long as it doesn't go below that, it should be fine. And 9 volt, it's a little higher than I'd like to see at 12. Alright, let's do a quick load test of sorts. Use a little standard power supply with Commodore 64 and a Super CPU. You can't use a Super CPU on a stock power supply. program oh that's fast back down to normal speed Whee! normal speed yeah handles a super CPU just fine good resource for information on the power supplies is the c64-wiki.com. Their info here is pretty good. 
And going back to what we just tested, that first one came in just at 5.2 volts. And yeah, like I said, it's it's kind of high and it's actually, you're saying, yeah, this is not healthy for it and you should replace it. So yeah, you said 5.2, you shouldn't use it. Um, one of the other ones was at 5.14. Yeah, it's getting higher than you'd like to see. And strangely, and why I say you can't really trust those testers, that tester, um, 100%. It just, you know, something for a quick reference is the power supply, I know for a fact, is dead, was right in the range. It was like 5.06. You know, it's right in the range, but that power supply is dead. So I don't think that's putting it much under load. And, and I normally don't use a stock C64, so it may be loading it close to what a stock C64 is, but I almost always use at least a um, Turbo Chameleon and then sometimes Super CPU. So that puts a much bigger load, which you can't use on a stock power supply. But anyhow, it was you know, 30 something dollars. So it is what it is for a quick look. And if you plug it in and you see you're getting like 5.5 or 6 volts, your power supply is shot. Or if it's way down, you know, 4.8 something, it's, yeah, it's no good. Now, strangely, that brand new one, I'm not as much worried about that 9 volt AC being up there at 12 volts. You know, let me know down in the comment section if you think that's a problem. But what is a little concerning is that 5 volt it was at uh, like 4.94. Sure, it's fine, but yeah, I just would like to see it a little higher. Okay, let's wrap this up. On that dual power supply that I showed. I got this one, they call it a Retro Power PSU, C64 FDD, dual US. This is the model without the OLED. Would have been nice to get the OLED, but I was being lighter on the cash side here. Then for what I was uh, calling a simple one, it's just a C64 PSU Classic Gray. And that was fine. That's all I needed on that. And then finally, the tester, it's their C64 PSU tester. And I think they have good products here. Um, this, the, the tester, it's not expensive, and it's not extensive, but, I mean, if you have a power supply that's really obviously bad, you'll be able to see. And, and even on mine, you can see the one, especially that's 5.2 volts. Yeah, at that point, you probably shouldn't be using it. But then again, don't, don't use the old black brick or even beige brick at this point. Don't use any original power supplies. Those things are 30-something going on 40 years old at this point, and it's not safe. You don't want to take out your old equipment. Get something new. Get something like this. Or if Ray Carlson's still around, I actually tried ordering from him first, and uh, I hope everything's okay with him because he didn't respond, and he normally responds. So if anybody knows if Ray's doing okay, please let me know down in the comments. Anyhow, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share this, please. And I'll be back again soon with some more content.